They weren't going to be able to tune in tonight for one reason or another. So, might be a smaller group, but that's okay. How's everybody doing? All right? That's good. Um, let me see here, Lena. Just need a few minutes. Okay, take your time, Lena. Uh, I just got back from Nova Scotia there, Sherry. Oh, how was your trip? It was actually, it was really good. It went without a hitch, tell you the truth, you know. We picked up the truck uh, after the airport without having to contact anyone and went out to mom's place and I shouted hi to my brother across the yard and uh, and then me and Marty packed up and, and the next day, pretty well the next night, we were we took off. So it all went without a hitch. Well, that's great. You didn't sneak a visit with anybody? Oh, no. No, we were really careful because <laughs> uh, we're filthy. We just kept telling everybody we're filthy city people. Don't come near us, please. We're disgusting. So it worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> when, we go up to, when we go up to our cottage in the summer, we always, we always said, you know, we knew we were very aware that they didn't like uh, the city people yeah. coming up in that area, right? Oh yeah, I used to go up and hang out up near near uh, Bancroft, a place called Maynooth. And we used to go shopping in Bancroft. And I remember we were we were waiting for my friend to come out of the grocery store. There was an old fellow sitting in front of the grocery store smoking a cigarette. And he was talking about the Torontonians coming up for the weekends. And he called them murder victims. Because <laughs> in, those, in those communities, when they hear about Toronto, it's always murder victims. So he just called us all murder victims, which I always thought was just great. He said, uh, murder victims coming up here every weekend. Had a couple of murder victims behind me on the road like yesterday. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's carry on, just in case this is going to be all of us for tonight. And uh, we'll we'll get into it. So let's see. I was I was having trouble trying to remember what we covered last week because the week has been a blur. Uh, so um, so we were doing our G and we're doing our swallowtail and we got pretty well all through Miss McLeod's right. That's working pretty good. Uh, did, and we did a D major scale in, in the octave and a half or whatever. Okay, that's great. Uh, did we start a new tune? Right, Jingle Bells. Okay, that's great. Well, we'll keep going on that tonight, too. Um, and uh, did anybody, uh, was anybody able to put together a little tune from their head this week? I just pulled my phone on. No? Nobody? Oh, my God. Well, we'll have to try that this week. We'll have to try, pick any little tune that you're, you know, like, for instance, Tell My Ma. That would be a great one. See that? That's very simple little tune there. That's only got like five or six notes in it, really. <laughs> And uh, also another one is, uh, what do you call it there, uh, Mari's Wedding. See that very simple tune. And I'm sure you guys are very familiar with the, both of those tunes. So. Maybe for next time, you can pick one of them and see if you can figure it out, okay? And then when you show me how you did and I hear your process and how you did it, then I can help and we can kind of be learning things quicker and easier, all right? Okay, so shall we get warmed up? Let's do our bowing exercises, shall we? Hi, Sharon. Hi, Lena. Okay. Okay, so let's do some bowing. So we'll do all of our usual configurations. And I'll see if I can remember the order that we were doing them in. Probably won't. Okay, a one, two, and here we go.
right down, up, up. Ready? And. Okay, all looking pretty good. A couple of things that I that I wanted to point out. First of all, the, did you notice how I was doing a slower jiggle that time? And it was more rhythmic. And you can play with that. You can do that sometimes. You can. And did you notice also what I was trying to do there? I was trying to do it kind of the half time and still really get a nice clean note with lots of, of uh, you know, wide note every time for that jiggle. Okay, and that was to see if you guys could see how I was maximizing my wrist and fingers there to get as long as a bow as I could out of just that wrist and fingers. See that? But still clean. Now, you can also do a kind of double time, which we usually do. Or just... that that's the kind of the double time first and the half time second there and you can go back and forth you just want to just make them kind of as even as you can okay so you can play with it and see how you get along now the chicken was a little quick don't you think a little quicker than we've usually done it what did anybody notice about that when we went quicker with the chicken did anybody notice anything in particular Pretty much all arm. There was not much hand. Oh yeah, so you tensed up. Yeah, and then I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and that's what happens. That's what I always try to point out that you know when you go try to go faster, sometimes that right arm really locks up and 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 when and that's the instinct. But what you want to do is the opposite. And a lot of people say that breathing helps. Breathing on the exhale kind of relaxes you back to. If you can. <laughs> Many people can't breathe at all while they play, you know, like they totally hold their breath. Uh, but it is a really good idea to try it. The way to get started breathing when you play, which is a really good idea, is the exhale on the down bow. That's what they always say you can, the way to get into it. So the next down bow you have, try to, <laughs> and that'll help the tension. Anybody notice anything else when you're going quicker there? Yes. My bow is super bouncy. Oh, yeah. It's super bouncy the whole time. <laughs> and but when uh, I go from transitioning, like I can do the quick, quick, and then when I 
go to do the longbow, it's just like brrrr, down the thing. Oh yeah, now that's a you know that's a classic problem, and I think I've probably explained a couple of times how that happens and why that happens. Now when you're going quicker. We, yeah, all that stuff that we did to, to eliminate bounce with the first finger, bringing it in like that, you know, when you go quicker, you got to do it a little quicker. You have to react a little quicker with that. So the faster you go, you work on the timing until you get it so that you kind of want that bounce, actually. Now, that's the other thing, is when you're bouncing back and forth at that tempo, did anybody notice the string pushing back? Yeah? Yeah? Anybody else notice that? So, you know, you come down like this, and then when you're finished it, it feels like the string is pushing your bow up off like that, okay? And it's like kind of like dribbling a basketball. That's what I always kind of try to use that analogy. So it's kind of like, oing, like that. And you want to use that. And if you can feel that, it'll kind of do that little note on its own. And then when you go to do the big note, you kind of let it sink just like I talked about before, you hit that, you feel the string go down, and you let it sink, and then you let it come back up on its own. It's all about letting the string do it, and that should reduce your bounce. Okay? Now that looked like it went pretty well. Yeah. I can see that it's better, a little bit better, right? And you can keep working on it, you know. The bounce is very important. Fiddle players use it all the time. So it's rather than try to rather than try to resist it, we want to just learn about it and be in control of it and use it. Okay? Let's try that again. Let's try the jiggle and the uh, and the chicken one more time. Okay. Here we go. So jiggling first. Then let, let's do the half time jig, jiggling. So. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, go. decisively moving bows. How did that feel? Did that feel a little bit better? Good. Okay. Anybody have any insights or questions or queries? Or revelations? <laughs> no? Okay. But well, why don't we try our G major scale now? Okay. Nice and bang on in tune. Let me put my tuner on to keep us all honest, which I do not have down here, I don't think. So I'll just have to do it by ear. Good luck. Here we go. A one, two, here we go.
right, how do we get along there? Anybody having any problems? No? Dan? Yes. Um, last, just a reminder that last week you showed us how to do that with the high B. Oh, good. Okay, let's do that then, shall we? <laughs> cool, let's do it. Might as well do it again anyway. What's that, Lena? G, key a girl. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, one, two, here we go. Okay, now how did that go with the high B? Everybody able to get all the way up there? Yeah, kinda? No? So one thing I noticed with many people is like when you were getting up there, your fingers were staying down pretty good. And then when you, you, you reach for the high B and I saw a couple of people go like this. <laughs> okay. And you want to try not to do that. As soon as you pick up those fingers now, you have absolutely no reference for where uh, that high B is going to be, especially if your first attempt isn't quite in tune. So you try to keep all those fingers down. And you can see that when I play mine, that's kind of how much space there is there. You see that? It's not much, but there is a space. Because if I was to play it here, that would be B flat. Okay? So it's just about there, and if you leave your fingers down, you can use that reference there, and then when you're coming down, those notes are already going to be in place. Okay, let's do one more time with the old G. Poor old G. Ready, two, and here we go. I forgot the high B, didn't I? God, jeez. Let's start at the high G. Okay, and we'll go up there. Ready, and G. Good.
I am not flying up in the air. Sharon, did you get your fiddle straightened out there? Okay, good. <laughs> Little struggle. Winter time struggle. <laughs> okay, cool. So that's G. Now let's do our arpeggio all the way up to high B, shall we? Okay. A one, two, ready, and... again just for the practice the strengthening ready and is to hear that from somebody to see how it's coming along. Have I got any brave volunteers that would like to play that G major arpeggio for me? Up there all the way up to B. Joanne's going to. I can tell she's going for the mute button. I'm actually trying to find it if I had it written down somewhere. Oh. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Give it a try. Let's see what happens. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. So when you were up at your high B, how how did you think you did with it? Which do you think you were in tune, flat, or sharp? I I don't know. I know I didn't. I know I wasn't on the right note. You were almost there. You were a little flat. And when I was looking at your finger, your finger looked like, and I can't really do it. Oh, there we go. Like that. Okay. So, and you might not need to. I, when I play my high B, I'm pretty well flat fingered. Yeah, my fingers do some weird things, but anyway. They do, eh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But so... It just naturally does that. But. Okay, well, I mean, you don't want to fight it too much. So, if it does that, just try to reach a little tiny bit higher knowing that it's going to do that, you know? Or use finger pressure, but I felt like you were kind of at the end of your finger pressure there. Yeah, so just a little tiny bit higher would, would do the job, okay? But good job. Who else can do it? Yay. Not too bad at all. What did you think of it, Lena? What do I think of the high B? Yeah. Uh, the high B, yeah, my speech, it's, uh, it's hard. <laughs> I think you were pretty well on there, though. I think I was on it. I just have to, I actually, I, 
My finger just has to go as far as it can go, and then I know that it's there. Mine too. That's exactly how I do it too. I shoot it out there like a snake's tongue and, and hope for the best. Now, I will tell you that you did get your high B in tune, but then did you notice a grand northern migration for the rest when you came down? Yeah. And that's the danger. That's And I remember it too. Like when you do have to shoot up there for everything you're worth, the danger is your hand comes up. So just try to remember to relax back into the place right after your B. Okay. But that was a really good, really good. Anybody else? No? Sherry. Yay. Yeah. Now, how did you feel about that, Sherry? I was on it, and then I let my finger pressure off before the bow was done, so it kind of went... <laughs> yeah, uh, so, and that does happen, you know, that's what I'm always saying with finger pressure is to hold her down even, when, even after you're finished playing the note, you know? That's what my dad used to say at hockey games. You got to hold them into the buzzer, into the boards, until the buzzer's finished ringing. <laughs> so anyway, so just keep your eye on that, because if you do keep your eye on that, that will serve you well in tunes when the eighth notes are flying. Okay, a lot of people have a problem with that when the eighth notes start flying. They let up on the note before it's done. You know what I mean? So keep that in mind. That's really good. Uh, and uh, otherwise, your hand came up a little tiny bit on the way down as well, okay? So again, to relax back into the place. So you see how many uh, times you saw that here tonight, right? It's a very common thing to have happen. So you want to relax that back into place when you're done. Let's try that arpeggio one more time with that in mind, and then we'll move on. Here we go. Alrighty. And. keep working on it for sure keep using your tuner especially with the arpeggio I want to try I want to just try it going backwards sure just, just think like pretty good good bell really good the only thing I would say is what I'm always saying and I'm gonna get the sign made so I have have to not say it anymore which is no which is more bow, more bow. yeah because those notes were in tune especially down when you got in the middle of the octave they were nicely in tune okay so more bow so we can hear them it's really good you're getting the idea okay shall we try it once more just for the crack why not <laughs> G major arpeggio. A one, two, three, and. and confident and comfortable. 
All right. Now, shall we warm up our swallowtail a little bit? Okay, we'll practice it. Now, trying to think of what tempo we had it at. Does anybody want to try just a little bit of it for me to show me what tempo you've been practicing it at? You don't have to play the whole thing, but just a bit. My winning smile? No? <laughs> Sherry's going to do it. Right on. Woo! Nice! That's pretty quick. Everybody good with that? Shall we try it like that? Alright, let's get our helmets on and go for it. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now that looked like it all went pretty well. Nobody stopped or 
had any seem to have any kind of Boeing problems, you know, or anything like that? How do you think it went? Any, now, is there any chance of a performance of it from somebody? Any chance? Hmm? Shona wants to do it, I can tell. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's do it. a little flustered because my dog just smashed a whole bottle of soy sauce all over the floor. Oh, no. It was late because it was everywhere. Oh, God. Oh, that's terrible. I can hear now. And I haven't practiced enough, but Lena and I have tried a few times to meet. So. Okay. It's all right. And I got stage fright, but here we go. Don't oversell yourself. Okay, Shona, that's good. That's good. Now, a couple of things that I really like. I love talking about what I like first. It's my favorite. I have a question to after. Yeah. Sure. What I really liked is you slowed down and it was nice and steady. Once you got to that tempo, your, your fingers stopped outrunning your bow. Yeah. And it got really nice. Let me tell you why your fingers were outrunning your bow, though. Uh -huh. Very stiff right arm. Especially when it comes to the string changing, eh? That's when it kills you. And your hand is over there, but your right hand is not. It's like, you know? I feel that I need to practice that a lot. So, doorway. Door, doorway. Try to take it off your mind by using the doorway, okay? Because you're playing the tune pretty nicely. If you did that exact tune in the doorway, then it would really help. Yeah. Okay? And don't worry about your soy sauce because uh, Sherry has a dish towel you can use there. Okay. <laughs> I actually also had a terrible accident. I picked up the bottle and I put it on the counter and then I bent down and knocked it over onto my face. Oh my god! <laughs> terrible. Jeez. If if the zoom camera had been on, you could have recorded it all and yeah. sent it to one of those shows. Yeah. <laughs> That's a question though, because I think it's just me. Yeah. But when I get to the end of the B part and I want to start it again. Am I supposed to be on a down bow at that point? Now, so to, to do that, you you I noticed that you weren't doing any of the up-ups. Do you remember the up-ups that I talked about? No, that's where I forget where they are. Okay, yeah. and so you notice on the music there where it has a quarter note followed by an eighth note. Yeah. Okay, so that's where you're going to do it. It's in the ending. So, uh, uh... <laughs> And then you're, but then, see him playing a little F there? Yeah. Yeah. That's what's going to do that for you. Okay. You don't have to play the F. You can also just play. But at that earlier up, up is really kind of, if you want to feel that down bow, downbeat thing, okay. then you, you do have to get that one up, up in there. And it's the same one in the second part. Watch. Oh, I guess.
guess it's not in there, is it? No, you don't have to sweat it in the second part. Just in that first part. Okay. Anybody else want to try it before we try it a little faster? No, nobody's jumping at the chance to give it a shot, no? Okay, let's just do it faster then. Okay, here we go. One, two, and we go. Anybody not be able to do it? Anybody have to stop? No? Didn't look like it. Medium? No, but I'm, I'm having... You, you stopped it then. Oh, did I? Oh. Drag. Okay. Sorry about that. Yes, yeah, Sharon? I'm, I'm having the same problem about where my bow is at the end because I find when I'm finishing... I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a down bow. Yeah, so, uh, first of all, let me see you play that first part, Sharon, just the first part, just the A part. Show me the B part. Okay. Now, that that would still be okay, but I can see that it's not that comfortable on your arm. I can see that. You're kind of like, you're doing it, but it doesn't feel good. Yeah. And I can tell you what you're not doing there. And you don't have to do it, but I think for you, I would recommend it because it feels like you want to do it, which is to slur all of those long note, short note things. I got my up. Okay. You were slurring the down ones, or you were slurring the up ones, but not the down ones. Uh, I don't think I've ever slurred down. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, is that 
I think I might have mentioned this before. By rights with jigs, you should be able to go either way. It doesn't matter. But I can see that your arm likes to do that down bow, so I think that's going to serve you very well. To slur... So let me see. The second one of those... Okay. This one. So there's only two. Okay, I'll try that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you want to try it for me now? See if it works? Uh, okay, so where is some... No, that's, see, that's where you're going to do a down slur. It's going to help. Once you get that under your arm, because I can see it's not going to take long. It's just that you keep doing this kind of like, oh, really? thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, having a, you're having a little, oh, really? moment. Yeah. No big deal. Uh, so anyway, once you get past that, it's going to work real good. And I think that should work for all you guys to slur all of those figures of quarter note followed by eighth note. Okay? I think it's going to help everybody to do that. Okay? Yeah. Anybody else have any problems with the swallowtail? Next time we'll try to get it faster. What we'll do with the swallowtail is a couple of things, okay? It's in the E minor, which is the same as G, so we're going to use it to work on G. We're always going to be using it to work on G and checking in, all right? So I'm going to be looking for a couple of things as we move along with this tune, one of them being smoothness. Okay, and I said talk about your your bow not outrunning your fingers the other way around, and and uh, uh, keeping everything straight with the bowing like Sharon was working on. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing is going to be intonation. Okay, we're going to really try to get this tune in tune, and your goal notes are going to be the third finger on the D string and the first finger on the D string. Okay. And then that should translate over to the A string as well. But in the key of E minor, the G and the E are so important. You know how many times you play them in this tune, right? So those are going to be your goal notes. I want all those threes and all those ones to be really, really in tune if possible, okay? Like overboard. And then every tune you play after that in the key of G is going to be Brillo, okay? Anyway, one more time before we move on to another key. One more time. You're gonna get try to get all them slurs in there. Oh, one, two, three. scale last time right and then we did some uh, jingle bells so why don't we start on that and I'd like to also like we'll get jingle bells and that'll be fun but I'd like to also kind of uh, introduce a tune in the key of we've already done Miss McClouds right so how about we do does anybody already play the high road to Linton no no 
Okay, good. Sharon played it before. High Road to where? The High Road to Linton. Linton. Linton, with an L. Linton. High Road to Linton. Yeah. Yeah, we have. You have done that? Yeah. And you have yeah. done it, Elaine, eh? Yeah. Okay, so that would be good. This would be an opportunity for you guys to, you know, recall it and uh, get it to that point that you guys have been working on tunes. Like Elaine has been working on a couple of tunes to be able to kind of just blast start to finish at a decent tempo with no problems. And, uh, and we're getting somewhere too. So we could, you guys that have done this tune before, you can treat it like that exercise, okay? Uh, and I'll be checking in with you and see how you're getting along. But the high road to Linton, I'm going to introduce after we try, uh, we'll play the D major scale, a little bit of uh, Jingle Bells. We'll try to get the rest of Jingle Bells. And then we'll, we'll try playing, uh, we'll try introduce the high road to Linton, okay? So first of all, let's play our D major scale in an octave and a half. So if you forget what that is, we're starting on the D string. And we're going all the way up to the A, the high A, which is going to be E3. Then we're going to come down, and instead of stopping at the D string, we're going to go all the way down to G1, which is low A. Okay? And we'll see how we get along with that. So we're starting with the D. Oh, one, two, D, and... a new scale last time a, a new concept playing in one and a half octaves like that how did you do this week were you able to kind of get your ears around it anybody have problems getting your ear around it no yes <laughs> indeed uh, so let's try it again with that in mind okay the problem is context here is the scale in one octave just so that you remember <laughs> And all we're doing is this. See what I mean by that? It's just like a little kind of musical idea. You think about it like that. So let's give it a one more go, guys. D major, octave and a half. Ready? And. time yeah anybody have any questions or problems or comments or revelations about that key nobody how about we try the old arpeggio okay we'll start it on the low A and then I'll call out the letters as we go ready low A D F sharp A, D, F sharp, A, back 
to the F sharp. D. Open A. F sharp. Open B. G1. Let's do that again right away for the strengthening. Okay, starting on the low A. A1. Two. problem? You want to try it for me a bit? I can see what's going on. I was just getting um, confused on where the uh, second note is. So yeah. Is it? I don't it's, know what the next one is. It's open D. Okay, so everything else was really good. So when in doubt, play an open D. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, was, I was making it harder than it is. Yeah, yeah. But that's, so that sounds good, though. Good approach to all the notes and pretty good intonation. So that sounds great. Once you get it under your fingers, it'll be great. Okay. Anybody else want to try it for me or have a question or a problem or a comment or anything? Um, I'm just going to write down the arpeggio things just for later practicing because I know I'll forget. So I just want to write it down right. So yep. D1, open D, D2, open A, A3, E1, E3? Yes, correct. Now, okay. this is a pop quiz. G1, what note is that? A. Okay, open D, what note is that? D. <laughs> How about D2? F. What? Correct. Uh, how about A3? A. No, sorry. What? A3? D. Good. How about E1? This is hard for everybody. E1? E1. F sharp. Very good. Yes. When you put your E1 down in the regular position, it's F sharp. And if you want to play F natural, you got to drag her back to the nut. Very good. And then E3, like you said, is an A. So I like to pop in these questions once in a while. See how everybody's getting along, getting away from the numbers, not in the letters. You know what I mean? Because it's a process. Okay, good. So uh, anybody else want to want to play it for me or have any problems or questions like that? No? Okay. Did anybody get anywhere on Jingle Bells? Hmm? Who wants to play me Jingle Bells? Oh, come on. What's the worst that can happen? I'll give it a try, but I, I don't think I'm having all of it. That's all right. Give it a try, Lee. What, 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 key, what key is it in? We're doing it in A. A? Yeah. No, you're gone. It's okay, take your time. That's it. It was the three. 
It was the three. So close. So close. It was the three. That's pretty good. Now, Elaine, that was really good. You got most of that tune, and that's really great. It, the, one of the confusing things that you have to watch out for with these songs, right, is the same note and playing it the right lengths, you know? So, jingle bells, jingle bells, j see what I mean? It can get really confusing if you play it like, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way, see what I mean? So, that's just your bow work there. And, and what a, what's a good idea, I was talking to somebody about this today in Suzuki, you know, they put a piece of tape here and a piece of tape here and one in the middle. And they say to the kids, this is your half note, this is your quarter note. See that? And they try to use as much, the whole thing for every half note and exactly half the, for every quarter note. Or for us, this is your quarter note, this is your eighth note. See what I mean? And you want to make that consistent every time, right? All the long notes are going to be here to here. All the short notes are going to be here to here. And then you have no choice. Eh, 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 eh. See that? Works out perfect. So we're going to work on that together, okay? Very good, though. Who else going to play it for me? Lena, you look ready. You look like you got your war face on. You're going to play this tune. Okay, so I don't know the second half, but I can try the first Yep, we're just doing this for the first half anyway. Oh, good. Okay. Very good, yeah. Couple of staggers, but that's okay. We're gonna practice it a million times. Now that was good bowing, okay? That was nice length of bow. Keep that up, that's gonna serve you well. Who else wants to do it? This is exciting. Merry Christmas. Snow on the ground outside, we got a tree. We can't put it up until I get all the crap out of my living room that we brought from Nova Scotia. <laughs> my house looks like a shopping mall right now. Anyway, nobody's going to do it. Oh, uh, let's do it together. And let's go a little slower to give ourselves a chance to do that length of note thing that I was talking about. Okay? A one, two, three, and. too bad. Anybody hopelessly hopeless? Let's do it again. Oh, one, two, three, and really quite good for, as far as I can see the fingers coming down pretty good the bow moving good I do see people using more bow that's good okay anybody else want to play it for me or have any questions or problems where they can't do it anyone anyone Sharon you want to give it a go I know you love Christmas music yes, I still have my book. 
Oh, good. You could even get that sleigh moving faster if you wanted to. It's very good. Yeah, it's awesome. It was kind of funny because while you were playing, my little girl Sylvia was singing Jingle Bells upstairs. <laughs> okay, so why don't we try a little tiny bit faster there, guys? Because it seems like everybody has a decent handle on the first part here. So we'll try a little tiny bit faster and then we'll get the second part slightly more challenging, but I don't think we'll have a problem. There's one hard note. One. Okay. A one, two, three, and. problems at that tempo it looked good but I always like to ask everybody able to do it okay good now the second part the B part dashing through the snow <laughs> that's the hard note D3 stretch for a G sharp okay None here, that's good. Anyway, I like that, the rest of it, you know, kind of like that. So you see how it's very repetitive, eh? We got this here phrase. And then you do it again with a different note at the end. See that? And then we do it again. But it's a little different because we use different notes, same pattern. The hard note. And then. And then we do it all again. You see how repetitive that is, eh? So those first couple of notes of the B part are a D1, that's an E, and an A2, that's a C sharp. And by the way, if you want to ever try it, it makes a very nice double stop. See that? So that's an E to a C sharp, and then a B, scale down, back to where you started. See that? So let's try that together. D1 and then A2. Ready, and D1, A2, 1, A, D1 again. Another couple. C sharp again. One. A. Now the two. Couple more. Now A3. Scale down. One. Hard note. G sharp. Okay. You mess around get that one. It's your third finger but it's stretched. Okay. 
And then we got the E string. And then we got A3, 1, and then a big 2, a C sharp. Okay, that's how it works. Okay, and like I said, that G sharp there, see, watch when I play it. Uh, uh. So you can see what my fingers look like there. You see how there's a space now between each finger. See that? So this finger is no longer down here where it usually goes. It's now up here. Now, you also notice that the space between 2 and 3 is not quite as big as between 1 and 2. Because that's the nature of the fiddle. As you go up, the notes get closer together. Okay, so that's how you're going to find your G sharp. You're going to put all three fingers down, the one and the two in the normal place, and the third stretched with a little space between two and three now, which is not the usual. Okay, it's kind of like the C sharp on the D major scale that we were doing. Now, so let's see if we can get that. So D1 to the A2, okay? Let's go until we get to that note. D1, A2, ready? And one, two, one, A, D1 again. Couple more. C sharp. One, A, D2. Couple more. A3. Down we go. Here we go with the, with the hard note. And then the E string. A3, 1, 2. Let's try that again, guys. This time I'm not going to call out the numbers, okay? Ready? And. One more time. Ready and Same as the beginning, D1, A2, couple more, two again, two now, couple more, three, E string. One, E, A3, one, A. Ah, yeah, the ending. <laughs> okay, so yeah, when you go around and play the second half of that, it starts the same. But instead of the hard note now, we're going to go straight to E. And there's four of them, great big long ones. And then the one, down we go. Okay. And you can add that E at the end if you want to, okay? So let's try those four big E's, and then the one, and then down we go. So four big E's, ready, and. One, E, A3, 
One. A. And then the E. And then we're ready for it. See how that works there? So let's try that again from the big E's. Laugh and play in a, whatever is the lyrics is supposed to be. Ready, E. One, E, A3, one, A, E. One more time. Ready, open E. Ready, and. One, E, A3, one, A, E. Yeah. Is that getting there? Okay, now let's try that whole part. I'm going to play it for you while you have a little breather. So it starts with the D1 to the A2. Hard note. close. Let's do it. D1 to A2. No giving up. Okay. A1, 2, D1 to A2. semi-successful man. I didn't see anybody curse or throw their fiddle at anything or stop or anything. So, that was, so let's do it again. Just like that except better. We Bill got a question. You got a question Bill? No? Okay. Let's do it. A one, two, three, go! victim to play it for me because I believe no one. And I'm tired. Sherry's going to do it. Right on.
You got it, Cherry. You got it, man. That's very good. Yeah. Excellent. We'll try. We'll work on getting it a bit faster so it makes more sense to your ear, you know? Very good. Who else wants to try it? See all the kudos I just gave Sherry? It's fun. You do it and I say it's awesome. It feels great. Who wants to give it a try? Lena's already doing it. Why don't you do it, Lena? All right. <laughs> Wait, I had a wrong start. It's okay. on now I'll tell you what happened in your first attempt there you were just flat and I'm really glad you noticed it and started again because that's a really good sign that you're hearing that and you're reacting okay excellent very good anybody else want to get kudos like that what about you Sharon you're all over this stuff Sharon is a curler she enjoys the winter <laughs> no no curling this year eh? God Yes, very good, Sharon. Okay, that's great. Everybody seems to be getting it pretty good. Is anybody having any problems where they can't get it? Damn it. No? Of course, yeah, we'll keep working on that. Next next time, maybe next time, we'll work on the key of A. Okay? Because we did the, the we did the stretched third finger with that D scale. All right, but when we do the key of A, we'll have to do that G sharp, that D3 stretch as well. So maybe we'll touch on that and start talking about the key of A, what it should sound like when it's in tune and the challenges involved, okay? But that's very good. So now, shall we try her right from one end to the other? I think it would be a good idea. Okay, nice and easy. Here we go. Ready?
Now, of course, this tune, you know Jingle Bells. You can play it pretty well endlessly if you wanted to. Never ending. Uh, so you got to kind of choose when to stop. But uh, So how did that go, squishing it together? Did anybody have any problems with that, squishing that tune together, the, cur the verse and the chorus? Is it all okay? No problems? Shall we try a little faster then? All right. A one, two, three, go. In there, if you're wondering what I did, I just went up the scale from the Eastern instead of I just went up. See how that works? And it's fun to do. And uh, I realized that this song, Jingle Bells, actually doesn't have anything to do with Christmas, it's just going on a sleigh in the wintertime. There's no Christmas in the whole song. Kind of interesting. You could sing it in February if you want. Okay, so that's Jingle Bell. So we'll keep working on it, you know, trying to make it more in tune, have a little bit of life, and uh, uh, a good bowing. That's kind of what we're mainly using this tune for. And you can see on my bow how I'm trying to split it up consistently for the long notes and the short notes. And that's what's going to help you guys the most. Okay? Now, the high road to Linton. First of all, let me play it a couple of times, just regular speed, regular old speed, so you can kind of get the sound of it ringing around in your head. And then I'm going to show you real slow what it is, and just talk about it and stuff like that, and, uh, and then we'll start working on it. We'll actually start working on it next week, but this week you'll have the recording, and, you'll, and we'll have talked about it, so you can kind of start looking at it and see if you can start trying to get it, okay? But first of all, I'll just play it regular old speed. Oh, any other questions, though, about Jingle Bells? I forgot to ask. Anybody have problems or questions? And I would just like to know, how, you mentioned something about a double stop. Yeah. What is, what is that? Because you said there was one spot that was really good to do, and it sounds really cool when you do that. 
It sure does. So double, double stops are uh, basically when you play two strings at once, okay, with your bow. Now the term double stop, first of all, it comes from the old term that people used to use for fingering the strings. They never used to say that fingering the strings, they used to call it stopping the strings. See that? Which I love that term because that implies finger pressure. When you're stopping the string, you're kind of giving it a little hug with your finger. It's different than, say, playing a guitar. And so that's why I really like that term, stopping the strings. Double stop is when you do stop two strings. See what I mean? So in this tune, what I was saying there is the first two notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a sixth. The notes are six notes apart. And when you play them together, that's what it sounds like. So it's actually the first two opening notes of the tune. And if you wanted to practice them, it's good to play them as a double stop. Okay, now that's what I was referring to before. That's an E and the C sharp together. You can also do it with the other E, which is the open E string. See that? how that works. That's what I was doing there. Are you hearing that? And then I did some more. I did some more complicated ones. This is a, th a fourth, or sorry, a third. And then I go back to this. And then this one. So you can play the E string along that with that most of it, except for when I put the one down there. And then in the second part. See how I do that? I play that when I finish playing the A, and I have to play the E, I just play it along with the A. I'm doing that all the time. My bow is right lazy. It never wants to get off the string it just played. You know what I mean? And it sounds cool. That's another one of those three-in-one combos. See that? More of the E string. Uh. Oh, sorry. See how that works there? I'm doing that stuff all the time, okay? If you want to attempt it, be careful. When you play two strings with the same bow, you have to kind of split the difference between how much you dig in. You dig in on the one string and you kind of let it spill over to the other string so it doesn't put you out of tune. Here's what it sounds like to play a, a proper AE double stop. Here's what it sounds like when you screw it up. Hear that? Hear the E string going flat there? Ugh. And it really easily happens on the E, big time. But it also happens on the other strings. <laughs> and that's just where I'm heaving in too much to get the two strings. You don't need to heave in to get two strings. You just got to get the right angle. See that? Nice and easy. Free ringing. Okay, so that's how you do it. But be careful. It's, you know, we'll get there. Double stops. We'll get there. Uh, but it, that is how you do it. And those are the notes that I'm using. Okay? Mostly that E string. You can play like that whole first part with the E string going. Sounds good. Now, okay, so the high road to Linton. I'm going to play it for you. Any other questions? That was a very good question. Any other questions about Jingle Bells? Good.
that's her. The High Road to Linden. I think it might be one of the, uh, probably the second most popular Scottish tune there is. Second to uh, uh, Miss McLeod's, I think. God, everybody plays it. And the nice thing is, is that they play it in Ireland. They play it in Cape Breton. They play it on the west coast of Canada. They play it on the east coast. They play it in the north. Everybody, everywhere, England, I've played this tune. So uh, it's a real, real good one to have under your belt. A must-have. And you can hear there, I was doing lots of double-stopping. Did you hear that? Yeah. There's lots of opportunity for it in this tune. And it's in the same key as Jingle Bells, the key of A, A major. And that means that that open E string I was playing along with everything during the Jingle Bells, I can also do with this tune. It has a lot of the same arpeggio notes. And in the key of A, C sharp and E there, and A and E are all arpeggio notes. And so that's why I can double stop them. And so I think we could get into a bit of that with this tune. Okay. Now let me play it a little bit slower so you can hear it going by. And then uh, I'll, I'll make sure this week, I'm not going to Nova Scotia. Uh, this week, so uh, I'll make sure that I uh, get, make you a video, a slow video and a fast video, and upload the music. The music I will be using is from Sandy McIntyre's book. I find it to be the, well, it's the original version from the uh, Skinner book, uh, and it's what we all use to to uh, learn this tune, so you'll be, so everybody will be on the same page, okay, and I'll send it to you so that you have it. Anyway, and I'll remember, how many people, tell me this now, how many people would like it if I marked in the fingerings? And how many people are happy that they're past that? <laughs> okay, you got it. I'll do both. I'll do both. Do two versions. Hopefully at one point or other, you'll take the numbered version and throw it away. Okay? Anyway, so I'm going to do it slow so you can hear it going by. better I'm getting at talking while I'm playing. You know, because of this computer, this goddamn computer. For years, it was hopeless to talk and play. I remember I was playing next to my friend Brian Pickell one time at a dance. All I wanted to say was A. But what came out was... Aah! I just can't, could not seem to do it, but doing this computer thing seems to be able to make me do it. So I pointed out a few of the things, challenges, and things we're going to look at there while I was going along. Okay? Um, anyway, any questions about that? It's a good one, eh? There's lots of challenges. There's string crossing in the second part. Did you notice that? So that's going to be a challenge there. And it also has a, pa a pattern of fingers. If you look at my fingers... It's 
So you can see it's more evens and odds. Two open open, two, and then the ones and threes. Then back to the opens and twos. And then all ones, except for the three, to do it again. So you see how that works. So, so that's some of the things we'll be doing with that tune, okay? Now, is there any questions for me or anything at all before we wrap it up oh, for this evening and play Jingle Bells once more? Anything at all? When, uh, when I played that, uh, when I was playing the guitar in that, in that high road to Linton, yep. in the third part, I'll never forget, we just went bum, bum, and then I played it and bum, bum. And it really sounded good. Oh, totally. And you're not the only one to think of that trick, Bill. That's been done lots of times. A great thing to do to that tune. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Yes, Lena. Um, the A major scale, just for practicing purposes later, we did that one together as well. Is that the one that um, it starts on, does it also start on the, on the G1? The low A, yes, it does. So now we're we're starting the D major and A major on the G one. No, we're starting the D major on just the open D with a scale anyway, but we're going all the way down to G one. Yeah. Okay. See what I mean there? Because yeah, Sean and I were practicing and we couldn't we couldn't we were getting confused we were mixing up the two those two scales. Yes. So the A major starts on G one and goes down to or all up to. What note? The high B? Well, it's an A scale, so what note would it end at? The high A? Yes, that's well, right. Also where we're going with the D major scale now. Yes, that's right. We're also ending that on A. And it is confusing. Yes, absolutely. And that's why I thought we'd do A after D, uh, because we add a sharp. Basically, what we're doing here, D major has two sharps, F and C. A major has three sharps, F, G, and D. F, C, and G, sorry. F, C, and G. So we're adding a sharp here. So really the only difference between D major and A major is that we gotta stretch that third finger on the D string. Okay, and we gotta play a high two on the E string instead of a low two, a high two. Now, for the high road to Linton, you know, the thing is about fiddle tunes is that they're never truly in the keys that they're supposed to be in. There's usually a modification. I was doing, Jennifer was doing arrangements for the Celtic Orchestra tonight, and she said, we were doing the copper plates, and she said, okay, so the, so the uh, old copper plate is also in, in G. And I was like, no, it's A minor with an F sharp. And then she figured out, because she has three degrees right away, she figured out that that's Dorian mode. Okay, A Dorian mode. So the high road to Linton is similar. It's A major, but that G on the E string is going to be natural. Okay, anyway, we'll talk more about it next time. But that was a very good question, Lena. <laughs> anything else? Any other comments or anything? Yes, Joanne? No? Okay, good. Back to work, guys. We'll see you next week, and I'll get that material out straight away. Thanks a million. Thank you. Bye-bye.